Welcome to the anomaly, the contradistinct, uncensored, unmonetizable, and deemed unwatchable by the mainstream masses. We are the ones they cannot control and attempt to hold back, but together we form revolution. The Ramborgia. Welcome to John Rambo Presents the Show. Stay ballsy. Don't take any shit from anyone. So this has been an interesting week. Lots of people that don't usually watch our little program. Check it out last week. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty confident in believing that every one of them watched the entire show, and not just the first few minutes. It's pretty <sighs> accurate. Brian, did you see last week's show? And have you contributed to my Pay Me Tons account? Indeed, I have. Thank you, Brian. I much appreciated. John, I'm still waiting for your payment. Dude, look, just just come and get it. Your, video, <laughs> your video's completely frozen right now. Yeah. I no, can... man, I just all dropped I, a bunch of coins. All I heard was change dropping. We didn't get no visual. These, are the, these are the joys <laughs> of the video show. <laughs> this is why it's done. This is why it's done. We'll try to fix you in a little while. You're going to be frozen for, for uh, who knows? Oh, some man. Time. I just closed uh, Chrome, and that, like, fixed everything from my end. Okay, I don't know. Maybe uh, I should <sighs> close my Chrome, too. All right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So last week's show, we got a copyright ID claim from an Indian TV station. and the what? show, Yeah, the, sh- the show was actually <laughs> taken down for several hours. So I had to dispute it, and it's back up, but it's currently blocked in certain countries, so certain countries banned. It's too much, too much for them. So I mean, uh, it was probably too much for anybody anyway, but... Right, it should be banned in all countries, honestly. You know, Too raunchy, huh? I, too real? Apparently, yes. That's right. I'm not allowed to open my mouth in several continents. That's what you know what a, like a first world nation is compared to a third world. The ones that allow the show, third world nations. Or something. <laughs> um... <laughs> Some people actually took the intro, re-uploaded it, and found much more success than we did with the original version, which is great. I'm not mad. God bless. I ain't even you know. mad. Stuff is free to use however you like, and if you can find more success in it than I can, that's awesome. Some people really enjoyed it. Some people are upset. Some are upset that others enjoyed it. <laughs> I thought you'd say <laughs> that. Some find it enjoyable that others are upset that they enjoyed it. Right? So I had to give it some thought. I had to look at myself. Took a look at the man in the mirror. That's right, the man in the mirror. I asked him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. The man in the mirror. So uh, to the people that supported me last week, I've had to think about this. I'm sorry, I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong if you did support me. I just so happen to align myself with those that were critical of me. I think they're the ones that are right in this job. So, it's one thing to say that, but to actually make that change is something else entirely. So, not only do I agree, I think our stuff should be completely removed from the internet totally, totally gone. And while at my job today... I made a call on behalf of those that don't like the show, that don't like me, because I agree with you. So on your behalf, I made a very special call to do your bidding, because you are the ones who are correct, you are the honest ones, you are the right ones, and we're going to play that for you right here, right now. There you go. Boom. Hi. Welcome to the Googleplex. Calls are recorded for training and research. Or just hang on. All right. Let's continue. To help you get to the right area of Google... First, if you're calling about Google services for your business, press 1. Otherwise, press 2. Okay, if you're calling because you can't get into your Gmail account, press 1. Otherwise, if you need support for one of our devices or the Play Store, press 2. For YouTube, 3. Google Earth and Maps, 4. One of our other products, one moment. Just to let you know, calls may be monitored or recorded for quality and training, subject to our privacy policy. All right, hang on. Hi, thank you for calling Google. My name is... Can I start off with your first name, please? My name is John. J-O-H-N. Alright, thank you, John. And how may I help you out today? 
Yes, how are you doing today? I'd like to file a complaint about a YouTube channel. It is called John Rainbow Presents. And uh, if you will, sir, I have several complaints I'd like to read. If you could possibly pass these along to the CEO um, of Google, well, before, Sundar Pichai. Right. Before we do that, the actual way that um, I believe you would want to report something or file a complaint for, regarding YouTube, just set expectations. You reach the general support line here at Google. Uh, we don't have a specific live support YouTube team, uh, but let me look into how we would file a report or complaint on YouTube, okay? Okay, thank you. So just just, just bear with me while sure, I... Sure, you got it. Or actually, do you mind if I just put you on a brief hold while I look into that for you? That's I'm great, thank you. Hi, John, you still there? Yes, sir. All right, thank you for patiently holding. So what um, what did you want to report? Because there's various things that we can report. Can you just give me the, the main gist of like what category this might go under? Like Would it be like threats or bullying or the flagging some content? Uh, what is it regarding? I'm not really sure. I have several complaints here. I'd like to read them off. It's about the John Rambo Presents channel. Um, maybe you could uh, write these down, transcribe them, perhaps um, place them in the file or something. Well, uh, I, I can't do that, but I'm just looking, like I said, our CEO doesn't deal with these types of matters, but Sundar like Pichai. I said, I'm looking at the YouTube. Yeah, I I know. I know who our CEO is, but I'm just saying that he doesn't deal with, you know, a YouTube. Well, he might want to hear this. Like Let me that. read some of these off to you. John Rambo, you just a fucking unthankful, spelled with two L's, idiot. That's all I have to say. When I watched the co-op with DSP, I really enjoyed it, but now you dumb him away. Like shit without a reason. There's another one here. LOL. Still butthurt. Cuz. C-U-Z. He got kicked. Stay free loser. Here's the third one. Dislike space. Exclamation point, exclamation point. I'm calling you out, John, while you wait until Phil was halfway across the world before doing this. Space question mark. Because you know he would beat your Jew nose. Skinny A star star in Bridgeport. You a coward. You see you have attached okay. yourself to OJ and Trotta now, and you will turn on them when you have used them up. OJ doesn't want to do the podcast anymore, yet you're using okay, emotional God. blackmail to continue it. He probably wants to hang with his real friends. Did you okay, get, John, did you get, get all the that? Gist. So it sounds like, it sounds like uh, some hate, hate speech going on, so give me a sec to look into how we can uh, perhaps report this here. So are these comments on your YouTube video, or are these comments... These are comments that I'm submitting about this channel. I'm sorry? These are complaints that I'm okay. submitting towards this channel. Okay. Because I agree with them. So... Okay. So you agree with the hate speech directed towards a certain channel. Yes, that that's correct? correct. Yes. Okay, so what did what exactly did you want to do here? I would just like to make sure that the CEO of Google, Sundar Pichai, is, under, is aware of this. If you can, possibly, I could repeat all this if you like. You just write it down. No, and possibly no, send it to it's, him. It's, it's okay. Um, or I can get I can his do, I do maybe take his notes. home number. You could give me his home number maybe, and I could tell him myself. No, I cannot. I not. I cannot give you the Google CEO's home number as I do not have that myself. But what I can do is I'll take notes about this case. All our calls are recorded, and I'll take take this down. Okay. I um, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's the best that I can do. I really no appreciate problem. it. Thank you for calling Google. Thank you. Bye. No problem. All right, so we're back, and I've certainly addressed that issue head on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is John, and I am joined by the wonderful OJ. He's got a strange look on his face. You smell something bad or something? <laughs> I just, I, I, I take no, I had nothing to do with what you just heard or saw, okay? No? Nothing. Okay. Just, oh, my god. OJ's not involved. And, of course, we're joined by the man that beats up OJ. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Brian is here. Yeah. Brian, Welcome what's happening, back. man? What's up, y'all? What's, what's going on? What's going on today, man? <laughs> oh, busy, 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 man. Work, school, all the above. Dang. All the fun stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> I had to call Google myself. D 
Did you? Did your own issue? <laughs> yeah, dude. All they right. Charge, they they charging me on AdSense for something. I don't know none of them. Try out the? Did you try out the AdSense program? Like, <laughs> yes. Yes. It said I owed them twenty three cent. <laughs> right. I don't know what's going on. I got an in with them now. I could call them right now if you want me to. I will, we'll talk it out. I got friends there now. No, just, they're just gonna, don't. They're going to invite me to their headquarters. I can try the sleeping pod. And uh, have you ever researched the, the facility they have there? I know a little bit about it, yeah, a little bit. It sounds, it sounds incredible. It's ridiculous. Uh, I heard about the food there, too. Pretty good. What do, they get, what do you mean? What do they have? Well, yeah. they have, like, they, they, it's funny. Apparently, they thought that their employees were eating too much because they, I mean, they have, like, un, they had, like, unlimited M&Ms and candy and stuff just right out there where you could get them. But, but they realized, wow, we're eating a lot of M&Ms as a company. That's really unhealthy. So they moved the, they kept the M&Ms, but moved them somewhere farther away. And the amount of M&M consum- consumption went down by, like, 60 or 30 or some absurdly high percentage. No, percent. Uh, so uh, basically... People were too lazy to eat candy. Brian, is this a problem at your job? M&M's all over the place? Sleeping pods? People want to use the sleep pod? Or uh, um, use the at my job, Yeah. We have a slightly different problem. What's going on? <laughs> we don't have free M&M's, but some people think they, they should be free. They think they, they're not oh, sure. no. <laughs> they, they're not really sure if it's free or not. So they walk out with them and be like, oh, sorry. Then they have to deal with you, right? <laughs> Yeah, they got to deal with me. They got to deal with me coming, running out the door like Batman. Bro, what's going on with the Assassin's Creed web series, man? I know you got a trailer came out maybe a couple weeks ago. You sent, I, I checked it out. What's the oh, update? Yeah. Tell us the update on the whole thing. Tomorrow, go we got a, got a table read tomorrow with um, some of my actresses. Really? And, yeah. These are actresses I, or people that you just, or chicks you just want to talk to? Bro, come on. Let's be honest here. Both. Oh, I see. <laughs> Dude, what on makes work and pleasure you know right? yeah yeah I, I always mix the two together how'd I'm you sure. find the actresses man did you do the craigslist ad did you do stuff like that i went to go do that but then i seen that craigslist is charging now uh-huh right. what yeah, yeah they, charge for it. they charge now yeah we got charged john john remember we really? did the, the craigslist 20, ad 25 I'm bucks very forgetful. do you remember when we did the ad and we had all the responses I didn't. Yeah, I remember all the naked photos. And we got to be like pigs. We sat there looking at just women's profiles and photos at the center. Uh, I, I, like I don't think hour. this person quite fits the role. And we're like, I no, don't know. we like this. No, that birthmark on her left left leg. No, just now. Make your top five. It was it was disgusting, really. The thing is, though, I'm going to have to do the uh, Craigslist thing because I'm gonna let you in on like a little uh, plot teaser, a plot spoiler. Excuse me. Um. The assassins, they're going to get trained in ninjutsu. Um, and I need a male Asian, a man of Asian descent. Uh huh. You know, in okay. his late, late to mid, you know, 40s or 30s. Oh, yeah. yeah so this, I'm, this is a tough I'm one. Going to ha- I'm going to have to put that on Craigslist because I can't find it just walking around the city. <laughs> and I, I'll, I'll stop random people like, hey, you're interested well, in acting? No. I'm like, all right. <laughs> well, dude, that's the thing. You're Get looking away. for you're looking for a guy to basically pretend to teach ninjutsu to people. Right. Dude, there, he's on the street. You just don't see him. <laughs> right. Maybe you should go to one of the taekwondo uh, establishments. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, most likely I will have to do that if Craigslist doesn't work out. Um, I have some time to find him because he doesn't have a lot of lines. You're going to get naked photos from Craigslist. That's what happened to us. You're gonna get middle-aged Asian men naked photos. Oh, dude, I get naked photos from Facebook, so I'm used to it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Pixar it didn't happen. What is going on out there? The internet. Is this what it is now? It's naked photos all over the place. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what the internet is. Really, it's that's what it's always just been. Really, naked photos in different contexts. I think that was like, uh, man, when it first really came became viable in the '90s. That was the first thought everyone had. We were only like eight years old. <laughs> it was like, you can look at naked. There's naked women on there. That or, is like, or, na- or naked mid- middle-aged Asian men, whatever you're looking at. It's fine. It's okay. Whatever, whatever, Whatever's your thing. Whatever your thing is, you know. All right. So we got a couple things we want to talk about here. One thing I want to bring up this weekend is Connecticut Comic Con over at the Mohegan Sun Casino. 
Oh, yeah. Sounds like a good time. I actually put in to do a panel to do a live show over there. Mm-hmm. They abruptly said no. Oh. But they did send us a bunch of press passes. So, I don't know. I might uh, might try to go. We, we, me and OJ are still kind of talking about it. I'd like to go. I'm not sure. We're trying yeah. to figure out the schedule-wise. And possibly we might be going down. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But I just want to throw it out there, man, because they were nice enough to give us the... What does a press pass even do? I don't even know. Uh, it gives you that? access to the press room, for one. There's a press room at a Comic-Con? Yeah, I saw the map. Oh. oh. It said there's a map, and there's, like, a, a green press room. A green press We could be, like, Clark Kent and Lois Lane together. Right? Um, uh, Shoddy Clark? Yeah, so I just want to put it over. I want to thank uh, Mitch, the dude that hooked us up with the, the press passes. If you guys are in the area, sounds like a good time. At the casino, Brian. Comic-Con oh, yeah. at the casino, man. Is that a bad idea, you think? No, it sounds like a good idea. People wagering, like, <laughs> Amazing Fantasy number 15, Spider-Man number 1, at the blackjack <laughs> table. It sounds like a profitable profitable night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for the people for the running casino. it. Uh, yes. For the casino. <laughs> <laughs> no one else, though. Yeah, no, no one else. No one else, though. Hey, Kevin Conroy's supposed to be there. The uh, animated series Batman voice. Yeah, it looks really good. There's a lot of, lot of celebrities, a lot of stuff going on. So we'll let you know, man. Stay tuned to the Twitter stuff and... Maybe we'll be heading down. I don't know. Who knows? I just love to be at like a blackjack table with that, with like some of the voice actors. Like I could just picture like hit Conroy, uh, sir. You're hitting on night. You're, you're sitting on not. You're hitting on nineteen. I'm Batman. Oh, that's, I didn't even think of that. Dude, yeah, that'd right. Be, that'd be that'd be sick. Oh, that'd be, that'd be amazing. Hamill was there. Oh, if Mark Hamill was there, you know, imagine. You know. <laughs> someone recorded. Uh, someone recorded a blackjack game. <laughs> Yeah, with with Hamill and Conroy and whoever else wrote their own there. Oh my gosh, uh, sir, you you have a pair of ten. You have two tens. Would you like to split? Hit me. <laughs> and OJ as well. OJ with his press pass. Oh, so. I'd be pressing up against all of them. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. That's not what that means, John. I mean, you can press up against the people. No. Yeah. See, 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 John just went Craigslist on us just. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get five dollars. Look, it happens on Craigslist. <laughs> Something else going on today. Today's August the twelfth, by the way. Oh, baby! Got a tweet from Snide, our buddy Snide. Mm-hmm. It's World Elephant Day. World Elephant Day is today. Big deal. Unbelievable, man! You guys could go to worldelephantday.org. I was checking it out. There's all kinds of things you could do. There's a petition to help protect elephants, which has got thousands of signatures. You can adopt an elephant, John, for fifty dollars. Which I was wow. thinking about doing. That's it, pretty cheap. Yeah, that seems kind of cheap, doesn't it, for a whole elephant? I don't, I don't know really what that means. It doesn't like come to your house. They probably just bite food or something. Yeah, they'll um, probably, they'll probably put your name on like a poster or something. <laughs> they put your name on the elephant. Peanut that would be by OJ. <laughs> it would be funny for like for one day they paint your name on the elephant, and I'm like, yeah, that was me. So it's World Elephant Day. Every time we do a show, it's World Elephant Day, but it actually is World Elephant Day today. Um, there's a question for Brian. Why are elephants the greatest of all animals, Brian? Um, You could disagree if you want. You'll be wrong, though. I do disagree. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> we'll go, if we continue, what's the greatest animal for you? A squirrel. Squirrel is the greatest animal. I've never heard Rats this before. Trees? <laughs> I've never heard this before. Tell us why. Tell us why. I like it. I like this. Explain. I actually have no legit reason. <laughs> it's just something about a squirrel. I'll put over the squirrels if you want. You'll put over the squirrel? All right. Here's the thing. Squirrels. Over the right? elephant. How much does a squirrel weigh? Not over the elephant, no, but <laughs> how much does a squirrel weigh, John? A few pounds, probably. A couple pounds, maybe not even. All right. Let's find out. Out there, alone in the world. And we all live in the Northeast, man. We see the squirrels all over the place, having sex out there in the bushes, climbing trees, getting electrocuted on wires. But as the weather gets cool, the squirrels got to prepare, man. They got a battle ahead of them. Have you ever seen the squirrel gathering nuts? Mm-hmm. You've seen this, yeah. And a squirrel could, could survive the whole winter like that? I could barely survive anything at all. All right. No, eastern gray squirrel is 0.88 to 1.3 pounds. Wow. Think about that. This tiny animal could survive the whole winter outside, find sc- uh, scavenging for food. That's powerful. That's a powerful animal, right? They're very intelligent. I put them over. You you got to think about it too. Like a yeah. squirrel. I do. Man, man can relate to a squirrel. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yes. We just trying to get a nut. 
All he wanted was, <laughs> <laughs> was that night. Boston night and survive the winter. If I could do I'm just that. picturing a squirrel posting to Craigslist looking for <laughs> <He's> nuts. Like, <laughs> Shout out to World Elephant Day. Why are elephants the greatest of all animals? Well, first of all, they are majestic. Really and there's nice. a number of wonderful elephant elephants from history. Um, obviously, there is Dumbo, who learned to fly, which is amazing. Mm. And then there were all the, oh no, the big Elephant Square in uh, New York. Not New York City. Gosh darn it. The Elephant Hotel the in elephant uh, hotel? Westchester. The haunted, yeah. the haunted Elephant Hotel. Yeah, okay, let's talk about that. Um, can you pull a that up quickly? Elephant yeah, man. Hotel. Pull that up fast. Yeah, just put in like haunt, Elephant Hotel Haunted or something so you can tell the story. Uh, this isn't a good story for, for uh, World Elephant Day, though. To talk about, talk about a haunting... A haunted elephant yeah. ghost. What is it, like a mammoth graveyard or something? <laughs> no, okay, yeah. so it was by... The Elephant Hotel was established by Hakalaya, uh, or Hakalaya All Bailey. Right. All right, it's, it's more offensive CH when you try to pronounce it right. I'm sorry, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. There's a CH in the middle of the word. Okay, go ahead, keep going. Um, Hakalaya Bailey, after he bought an African elephant, which he named Old Bet. He wanted to use the elephant for farm work, but Bailey decided... But people kept coming to see her, so, so he decided to take her through the Northeast which started to form the modern circus. Um, she died on, t- Old Bet died on tour in 1827. It's said that she's buried in front of the building. All right, so here's the thing. It's just pretty close to where I live. There's a hotel, Brian. Um, the elephant's buried in the front yard of the hotel. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was the first elephant brought to the, you know, to, to the Northeast. Is that, is that right? I think so. Oh, my gosh. And people believe that they've seen hauntings. They've seen this elephant ghost. What? Yes, around the premises. Just John, tell us. Oh, wait. So the first elephant brought to the United States was in 1796 aboard the America. But it might not Brian's have been Old feet Bet. Up for this. But <laughs> first references to Old Bet start in 1804 in Boston as part of a traveling menagerie. Old Bailey, uh, Hakaliah Bailey, bought the elephant for $1,000 in 1808. Unfortunately, Old, Old Bet, okay, Old Bet was, oh, this is really sad. All right, come on. Old Bet was killed in July 24th, 18, 1816. Old Bet was killed while on tour near Alfred Bain by local farmer Daniel Davis. What a dick. Who shot her and was later convicted of the crime. The farmer thought it was sinful for people to pay to see an animal. So we shot the animal. It's not, it's not sinful to kill it, but if you're paying money to see it, that's a sin. <laughs> but, um, interestingly, the Elephant Hotel was built in Somers in honor of Old Bet. Is the elephant buried in the yard? Uh, it's believed the elephant is buried in the yard, but right, I guess so there you go. Know. Anyway, it's World Elephant Day. It's a very great day. If you have some time, go over worldelephantday.org. You can send the petition. Adopt an elephant. Wonderful things going on out there, man. Um, it's a great day just, to be here, yes. Wait, you, you mentioned a petition. What is the petition for? I don't really know. I didn't read it completely. <laughs> I think it's just something to do with like protecting protecting the elephants or something. I don't know. Oh, the whole endangered species type. Exactly. Yeah, maybe like that. I do want to point out. Don't put me on the spot like that, Brian. Come on, man. It's not that kind of show, right? I don't know anything I'm talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm I'm one of them kind of people, though. <laughs> He's like, what's this petition you're telling me to sign? Yeah. I'm like, um, wait a minute, brother. <laughs> it's World Elephant Day. W E D. Wednesday. Think about it. Oh, get it. Wednesday, Wednesday, WED, World Elephant Day. Very nice, OJ, very nice. I don't get it. So, all right. Big movie weekend last weekend. I got the shirt on. You guys can't see. People at home could see. I got the shirt on in support of my boys and my girl. That's right. The Fantastic Four came out. (laughs) It's a huge release. Yup. Came out there, man. But I don't know what's going on. A little bit of a mess. I'm a little confused about it. The director came out. Josh Trank, he disowned the movie. I don't know if you guys saw that. He basically said... Yeah, uh, they deleted the tweet later. <laughs> he basically said, um, this isn't the movie I wanted to make, and they changed it. And Like, uh, I had a good movie six months, nine months ago. Yeah, I don't a year know ago. It would have been great. It has a 9% score on Rotten Tomatoes, which is the lowest ever for a superhero film. Which is Are saying, you counting saying Mortal Kombat lot. Annihilation? I don't know. I'm not sure if that counts as superhero. That's a video game, I think. Okay, they're kind of super. It's a video game translation. Completely different. Fine. Um, 
A lot of oh negative reviews. God. People really hated the movie. Brian, did you see the movie? Brian, did you see it? No. Why not? Don't. Why didn't you see the movie? Tell I us. knew. I knew from the very first teaser I seen of that movie that it was going to be complete and under garbage. Lies. It does it lies. Lies. We're gonna set you straight. We're gonna set you straight. We saw the movie, okay? You can't set me straight. You can't tell us it wasn't good. Uh-huh. We, OJ and I went to see it. Oh it's really? Got some spoilers for you, but yeah. Uh oh. We liked it a lot. We're gonna let you guys know it's a good movie. And what we've done here, we're not gonna spoil everything like John said. We're gonna pick five scenes that we're gonna talk about. We're gonna kind of dissect a little bit. Uh, we're gonna try to encourage people to go see the movie. We've been provided screenshots by Fox. They sent us these screenshots. Because we're the only ones in the entire internet uh, media world that would actually put over the movie and say something nice about it. Yep. Because, because they paid us, but don't worry about that. So here we go. So Where do you think I got that change from earlier? <laughs> so the first scene involves the human torch. Brian, you, I think you have these photos. You can take a look at them. Yeah. So on, okay, you're seeing these? Mm-hmm. All right, so we're on number one here. And it involves the human torch. We're going to have the photos for you in a second. They kind of changed him around, John. They kind of changed his yeah. powers. He's no longer a flame man. All right, why don't you tell everyone what's going on here? All right, so the Human Torch, apparently, they wanted to take things a little bit differently. They were tired of the same old flame on yeah. sort of deal. Like, they wanted to make him newer, more exciting, maybe get him in touch with the kids, and they wanted him to be extreme. Yeah, and also tie so, him to a product which they could mm-hmm. license and get some extra cash, which is smart, honestly. Yeah, now since you couldn't make the human Mountain Dew, like, you couldn't really do a cool Mountain Dew flame effect and have him flying around, that makes no sense. No, they went to something else that's very hot. In fact, there's a quote in the movie that there's only one where he says, there's only one thing in the world that's hotter than I am, and that is spicy Doritos. So the human torch is now... Flaming Doritos. Mm-hmm. He's, he's completely made of Doritos. Flaming Doritos. And he's a nice Doritos logo on his head there. Yup. His body's made of Doritos. Brian, what do you have to say about this? Uh, this change? Uh, uh, uh. He shouts what flavor the- on. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what do you think of the change here? What- is that a legit quote? Seriously? That it's Doritos legit- thing? Yes, we're right. The whole thing is serious. We went to see the movie. So there you what? go. He's not made of flaming Doritos. Wow. Fl- it's hot, man. What is it, John? What's the quote? The only thing in this world that is hotter than me is spicy Doritos. Available now at your local store is also part of the quote. Yeah, like, he, he activates by saying, flavor on! Okay, very nice. Flavor Dude. on. Dude! The human oh. crunch. He's going to be in a Nick KFC commercial, Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude, he's going to sit there, like... Making those like those special Doritos Locos tacos yeah. with portions of his body. Okay, well, here comes the next scene. Involves Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, and she could turn invisible. Obviously, the Invisible Woman. So there's a scene in this movie involving Doom. What I'm gonna do is put the picture up, then I'll explain what's going on. There you go. So as you see here, this is a very comedic part of the movie. These, these movies sometimes overly earnest, overly serious. John, mm-hmm. we they need, need to, to lighten up. They need to lighten up the Fantastic Four. They really got it this time. So what happens is she invisibly goes into Doom's closet, messes with his wardrobe. <laughs> she, like, draws on his suits, pours water into his shoes, yep. uh, and messes with his costume, his Doom suit. Um, kind of makes it Christmassy, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, she, she destroys everything but one set of his Doom suit. Yeah, she goes crazy in there, really. She takes a dump in the, the corner of the closet. Visibly, um, spits in a lot of the the pants, the slacks, things like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is a scene from the movie where she's hiding, <clears throat> and then Doom is just really upset. He's like, "What happened to my costume here?" Brian, what do you think about this? I find it hard to believe this stuff. Really, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you didn't see the movie. I know. Now you well, want to see it, though, don't you, dude? He's I... even got his world domination plans in his belt. Look. Dude, I'm terrified. I'm cutting you off. I apologize. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. Is that mistletoe on his chest? Yeah, I don't know what's going on. And she doesn't seem to be wearing her normal costume, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That might be that something works. for the sequel. I don't know. That's a cosplayer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the that's the movie, Brad. <laughs> um, okay, this is a, this next one involves a cameo 
uh, a lot of these superhero movies are all about like, creating a, a bigger universe. So you'll have, for instance, uh, you know, uh, Captain America will show up in uh, someone else's movie, and then they'll, it'll lead to the Avengers. They're all together. You know, it kind of sets things up. So Fantastic Four is no different. It's a shared universe. John, this, there's a cameo in this movie. Why don't you tell everyone about it? Here's the photo. Okay, so basically, Reed Richards thinks he's so cool because he can stretch his neck and everything. Yeah. You know, was stretching his neck f- for the past, I don't know, what, 10, 20 years? Uh-huh. Inspector Gadget. So this is so, a big scene in the movie here. Yeah, so Richard is, is he's as you can see, he's tied down to that to that table thing, and they're doing tests on him. Who is there keeping an eye on everything? Inspector Gadget himself. Who can understand what he's going through? Who could train him? Mm-hmm. And it could lead to a, like a buddy movie later on, where they're buddy cops, Mr. Fantastic and Inspector Gadget together. Twenty five Jump Street. Mm. So where where is the claw? <laughs> Was he in the movie? Too? <laughs> We don't know. We gotta wait till 2019. For yeah, the, the I, I think the claw is either working with Doom or is acting like an in it, like one of Doom's subordinates, but is just plotting to take over. Fantastic Gadget is the name of the the joint movie in the future. That's also what Doom. I think something to do. I think the Fantastic Gadget also has something to do with that Doom and uh, Sue Storm scene. A really a frightening scene too. Just imagine this is you tied to a table. You wake up and this guy's <laughs> in front of you like that. With that spinning, like, that springy neck. Yeah, that's something. Don't worry, it'll be over soon. <laughs> wow! <laughs> right, uh, are you sold on the movie? Yeah, we, we still have two more to go, but it, I think you want to see it now, don't you? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> we sold you on, alright. So speaking of cameos... Oh yeah, go, go ahead, John. So speaking of cameos, you know that... Stan Lee does a cameo in pretty much every Marvel or Marvel-related movie. Uh-huh. And they've been working really hard to find places for him. In one movie, he's a bartender. In another one, he's like... A custodian. I don't know, like or something, a custodian. Yeah, they're finding places for him. But, but he, he actually has a real takes... role in this one. To me, yeah, he never really affects the story much. Mm. Mm, pardon me, excuse me. Well, in this one, they took it to the next level. Here it is. And Stan Lee actually takes a gun and shoots Mr. Fantastic in the head. Yeah, he, he murders Mr. Fantastic in the movie, Brian. I'm sorry to spoil it for you and everyone else. It's, it's a very emotional scene. The rest of the Fantastic Four cry because they're, they're no longer four anymore, and obviously. Yeah, you see... Unless Stan the takes his place. Tears. I have a theory about that particular scene. Okay, yes. Tell us, please. That was Stan Lee killing off the Fantastic Four. For <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to kill the license. It's, like, it's actually not from the movie. He just came on set and just tried to destroy the uh, the entire production. Oh, man. Yeah, so the sequel before. is going to be the Freedom Foundation. So, yeah, he came in. Uh, this was a wild and very emotional. Um, a big spoiler. He was actually the villain. Stan Lee was the real villain in the end, not Dr. Doom. Yeah, you don't. You'd never have expected that. All right, so we got one more here. I don't know how to set this up, other than just kind of maybe showing it to you. Um, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. Let me get a facial reaction from John here about this. <laughs> this face. All right, here we go. This is a scene from the movie. This is after the credits, actually, John. Right? Did you yeah, say? it was bad enough seeing this. Uh, no, no, no. Picture seeing this on a fifty-foot screen. Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, it is the thing, <laughs> masturbating, I don't know, really know what it was about, it just, that's all it was, really, you maybe thought, did someone walk in on him, did, uh, does it have something to do with the sequel, setting up something in the future? No, it's, it's just, that's all it is, it goes on for about 20 minutes. Um, yeah, and some of the things he says are just rather awkward. Really, what does like, he say? Well, he's psyching <clears throat> himself up for the first, like, few minutes, you know? Yeah, so far, so it's done. Come on, come on. Rock hard. I'm rock hard. And uh, eventually degenerating into its clobbering time. And worse. Yeah, yeah. It makes a big mess, as you can see. Okay, we have to take this off the screen. Please. Um, this might be the last show of ever. I think this one may... And also the call earlier. I war- we yeah, may be man. done. We may be finished here. Completely. I, I, yeah, dude. Brian, I, I, Brian looks like he has some questions about this. Yes, Brian. What was he jerking off to? We don't know. That's the thing. It sounded like you heard some noises. I think it was pictures of Reed. Reed's body shot in the head, I think is what it was. 
<laughs> Any other questions, Brian, about the movie? Because you're still we're trying to sell you on it. That's why we did this today. John, you're Whoa. still looking at it? I took it off the screen. No, I'm just picturing him looking at pictures of Reed, and then there's a hole in Reed's skull, and... Mm. Uh, yeah. Put two and two together. <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah, you're going to see it now? Everyone's going to go see it. Very nice. That's what we've tried to do here. My God, I almost have like a bad taste in my mouth now. Do you feel? Yeah, do you find the I'm, same thing? The thing buying, certainly did. I'm buying that on Blu-ray. <laughs> That was a 3D, too. Did you see the 3D IMAX version? Wow. Oh, man. don't Just wait for the extended cut. Uh, no. Let's let it go. So let's That's talk about thing, something, dude. man. I'm glad Brian's here to talk about this. I feel like I need topic. a break. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the thing said. All right. I'm glad Brian's here to talk about this, man. This is something that uh, is very interesting to me and John. I had, I had a conversation with you, OJ, on uh, Friday, last Friday night. I talked to you for about an hour and a half about pretty much this one specific right. thing. Hitchbot. Oh. Brian, you know about Hitchbot? No, I do not. Oh, this is great. All right, this is great. You're going to love this. No, you're not. You're um, going to be sad and lose faith in humanity. All right, let me try to explain what's going on here. John, do you know the, the story about what it is and everything? Can you explain it better than me? No, I can't explain it All better right, than Hitchbot. Hitchbot is a, a robot that these Canadians built. And what they do is they do... Um, kind of like experiments, okay, Brian? So they drop the, the robot off somewhere and has a sign on him. It says, please take me to this place. And people, just average people, will pick him up and try to bring him where he's supposed to go. And he has a GPS inside of his body, so they're able to follow him. Right. The people that built him. So he's had many great successful trips. Okay, so here's a little article I got. Hitchbot, the cheerful hitchhiking robot that's made cross-country trips across Canada, the Netherlands, and Germany, had intended to travel across the United States as well. Um, so, to put this in perspective, this has worked in, in many different countries. In Canada, he went from coast to coast in like three weeks. People picked him up. They brought him very nicely. They took pictures with him. They took him to parties. Took him all over the place. Germany, no problem. Netherlands, no problem. They tried this in the United States, Brian. They tried this in the United States. Let's repeat that part of it. <laughs> he only made it 300 miles. Okay. Two weeks after beginning its U.S. trip in Boston, the robot was vandalized and destroyed. Guess where it happened? Philadelphia. He was destroyed in Philadelphia. <laughs> which, is where Brian, which is where Brian currently resides. <laughs> I did hear about this. Yeah, you heard about this. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, <laughs> after two weeks, and it took him two weeks. Like, he made it across all of Canada in, like, a few weeks, okay? He went from Boston just to Philly in two weeks. That's, ho- that's awful. That's what, a four-hour train ride? Yeah, so he consists of bits of technology, including a GPS and a movable arm, odds and ends such as Wellington boots and gardening gloves. It was put together by researchers from Ontario's McMaster and Ryerson Universities. The robot was a social experiment intended in part to test human psychology when confronted with technology. So it's like a human experiment, Brian. So they basically like, will people work together to just kind of carry this little robot, this robot right. boy, this robot right. child, if you will, just and nicely bring him across. He was supposed to go from Boston to San Francisco. And uh, I believe... Following the pictures, when he got to New York, he had no head. Someone had taken his head by the time he got to New York. And then when he got to Philly, someone just completely destroyed him. Um, A picture posted shows Hitchbot in a pile of leaves with his head missing and his arms torn off. And the the robot was able to tweet or or give out, like, like, sentiments. And after he was destroyed, his head was taken off, his limbs were cut off. His final words, Bri and John. He says, my love for humans will never fade. That was it. That was his final words. Yes, Bri. <laughs> nothing to say. Dude. Yeah. We're going to get invaded by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say I that? Like how that's the logical conclusion. That's what you took from this. That's what people probably thought. You must be, this is an alien. What is this? Is an alien. Dude, what the off. hell is wrong with people? Why did they violate the robot? Well, first of all, it's not what's wrong with people. What's wrong with Americans? The fact that uh, it was fine another everywhere else. 
Right. Um, there's also more here. The team is waiting to get Hitchbot's remains back from Philadelphia and will then decide on its next path. As a quote, he says, we, we know that many of Hitchbot's fans will be disappointed. But we want them to be assured that this great experiment is not over. Wait, so they, 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 re- they waiting to get remains back. They're trying to get the, the body. The body's destroyed. It was thrown in leaves. Oh, they're not going to get that. Toys R Us got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, if you saw the robot, would you pick him up? Yeah, I'd pick him up. What would you do? Would you cut his head off? What would you do with him? Um, I'd take him to a pawn shop and sell him. That's a good idea. I was thinking, like, <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna kill him, like, that's such a weird way to do it to cut his head off and stuff. Would yeah. you throw him off a building or like run him over or something like that instead? Right. Well, better, better yet, is a robot intelligent? It can do things. Right? He could speak. He, he can't move. He could. I guess he could. Uh, he could send out messages, like about things. Uh, John seems like he's a lot to say about this. What do you have? Well, to say? I was just thinking. Like Brian thinks we're going to get invaded by aliens. I think it's going to be the exact opposite because the aliens will know that no matter what they do, they show up on Earth. We're going to decapitate them and then rip their arms Don't off. Don't go to Philly. That's what they'll be like. All right, we're not going to Philly. It's no good. That'll be the last bastion of humanity. I think the I think the whole thing's kind of uh, I don't know a weird idea in the first place. It's kind of an interesting one at the same time. I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of indifferent about it. Um, it is very sad that people decided to destroy it. I think that's yeah. But you got you got to also wonder these people that destroyed it were their children because I mean <sighs> if, if kids see that they're gonna you know mess with it. Yeah, they're like. like- so if yeah. children see a, like an awesome robot, they're like, right. I don't want to be fl- friends with that or play with like it as a toy. I want to fucking b- rip his, I want to cut his head off and his limbs. And, and who's to say that this robot is so innocent? Okay? <laughs> let's let, let's flip, <laughs> let's let's flip it over a little bit. Now we're really getting into it here. Let, let's say the robot. This is the mentality of America, man. The, where we don't no one can be trusted. The robot was rolling, uh-huh. and and he flipped somebody off. Like, he cut somebody doing... off in the middle of the street. He was like, hey, blow it out your hair. And first of all, like, what the hell did you say to me? <laughs> I think it plays into America, man. We're doing, like, no, no one really trusts it. We can't really trust anyone. Or everyone's kind of, like, very uh, fearful yeah. of each other. What about like, this? What, what is this, this? What is this robot? Is... Kill him. I probably thought it was a bomb or something. He's got a camera in him. Kill him. He's t- filming us. Well, some dude some dude probably was shooting on his wife and got caught. He's like, fuck. <laughs> it's the robot. Hitch bot turns, in, hitch bot turns into snitch bot. John, how can we fix Hitchbot? Make this work next time. We just avoid Philly. I think the problem starting in the Northeast is a big, is maybe a major problem. Don't start in the Northeast. I, that should be the end I, point. Well, the Northeast, where you got a lot of you got a lot of different people. Like some, you've got the crazy uptight wackadoos, and then you've got like it's a lot of anger, a lot of anger up here. Yeah, I mean, some people are just like really just way too uptight, and they can't chill out. So they see this robot, and they're just like, mm. then you've got the snoots who are just like. Oh, I am not touching that robot. It is probably filthy. Oh, gosh, that's a Valley Girl accent, but you get what I mean. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. East Coast, I love the East Coast, man. I do, too. I it's just it's not a good place to be a robot. We're not the kind of people that are going to be like, let's, <laughs> p- let's give this robot a ride. We're just not that kind of folk over here, okay? It's not happening. <laughs> I just think it's the funniest part is that it was fine everywhere else, but here it barely even makes it a couple a couple weeks. Yes, Bray. I don't know. Maybe the robot is a Decepticon. You know? <laughs> oh my gosh, they were just protecting us. That Brian, robot's a spy. Brian seems to think this is good. He, he blames the robot. All right, it's fine. You know, different opinions, man. <laughs> no, I don't think it's good at all. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to make light of the situation. Trying to take a different position. Like, like I, I think it's effed up because I mean it's like, can we have nice things, people? No, apparently no, not. obviously not. This is why we can't have nice things. Like, it, it, it's, it's crazy. Though it does give me hope that if Skynet ever shows up, dude, we're set. We are okay. We're just going to de- dismember every single one of those Terminators, like, the second they show up. <laughs> yeah, people destroy the robot, but I, meanwhile, everyone's got a phone in their pocket that uh, who knows what's going on. Their pictures are in a cloud everyone can see, and, uh, you know, people are listening on your calls, and there you go. That robot was our only savior, Chris this. Oh, hey man, who knows? You bastards kill Wally. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe they thought he's full of money or something. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I've been messing around with uh, trying to come up with different things for the show, things to do. Have you ever messed with chat roulette, Brian? Chat roulette. Oh. Chat roulette. Yeah, you know about this. 
I do not. All right, so I've been messing around with this thing. <clears throat> Basically, it's like Skype, but you just get paired up with random people. Oh. You just get, ran- you just get paired up with someone at random. Usually a naked man. Well, there's rules on the site. Like, as soon as you go to it, it's like, you must be 18, no nudity. There's, like, there's all these different rules, but I don't think there's anyone really actually, like, policing it at all. Uh-uh. Um, so I'm like, man, this would be great for the show at some point. But I haven't figured out how to set it up where all everyone here could hear what they're saying and, and, and know what's going on. Right. So that's this this issue we're trying to... I've, I've Howard on it, working on it. But I think it could be very funny. I, I kind of messed with it last night. And like John said, like, one of the first people I got was this guy who was in the shower. He wasn't na- like I think I think he was naked, but he couldn't see below his waist. He was just standing there in the shower, like with a like. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Yeah. That's what? Right. <laughs> yeah, you, check this out later, man. Check this out later. Wait a minute. So it's like a it's like Skype, sorta, of, right? Uh huh. It's kind of, it's not like a Skype at all, but it's, it's a good comparison. So how did he answer in the shower? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. What the? So what kind of laptop he got? You got a webcam going across that has wires going up the floor at the he stairs. Got a remote. And, but basically, like you could you could hit you could hit next, or or you could stay and talk, or you could hit next. You go there, you could really goes to the next person. And it's it's fucking weird. Okay, it's 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 bizarre. All right, you'll get uh, some people like just yeah, just no. But uh, no. it'll be it'll be good for the show. So we're we're trying to work it out, trying to figure it out, and uh. We'll look forward to let, that at some point. Yeah, Brian. Let me know when you do that, because I want in. Oh, I know you do. I know you do. So yeah. we're trying to we gotta rig it so because the problem is not it's not a Skype call. It's through that it's through their site. It's a trick. So I could I would be able to hear them, but the people on the Skype call like you and John right now wouldn't be able to hear what they're saying and shit. So we got we'll, we'll figure it out in the future, but it's something that's coming. Okay. Bad choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> John just thinks everything's about sex, okay? There's some people that were there was like an old man. Like I went to one. I went to hit next. There was a guy like an old man in a chair. <laughs> I didn't talk to him. I was just going through. I was just hitting. Through. It was all men. It was all dudes, by the way, hundred um, percent. So no chicks. No chicks. Well, I think every, I think there's all dudes looking for chicks. That's what it basically is. How many chicks are actually on there? I don't know. Like you like they're like the uh, the odds are. What are the odds that they're actually going to be somewhere near you? Could eventually even dream of meeting up anyway. If any chick is smart, they would never go on there or approach it. Um, there's probably a couple oh, out there. Oh, I'll find them. Bro, check this out later, man. Do your own <laughs> research about this. Chat roulette. Don't do it. It's a What's trick. What's so wrong with it, John? Very- it's scary, and there's naked people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna troll on there. Oh, that's of course. I'm, I'm gonna call people, and I'm gonna just have be like this. <laughs> cover, uh, cover a nip. <laughs> well, that's nice of you. Oh, oh, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> so there you go. Peek-a-boo. So John, what's happening in your world, man? What do you have going on? Uh, not much, really. A friend of mine decided to make it so that I have no life and told me I should try playing The Binding of Isaac. What is that? Something with cards? It's a roguelike computer game, basically, where you play as a baby named Isaac whose mom is told by God to sacrifice <sighs> you. So you escape into the basement where you have to fight monsters and mutated babies to try and escape. There's only six levels, and it plays like The Legend of Zelda, except uh, you're Isaac, and you, the only way you can attack at first is basically you're a crying naked baby, and you attack by shooting tears. Brian, have you heard of this game? Unfortunately, yes. You have? Yeah. Dude, how high was the game developer who made this game? Um, I'm thinking acid, maybe shrooms. Dude, he had Mario mushrooms. <laughs> this guy's like this. This game. I mean, honestly, it's a lot of fun, and the challenge is great. I love a challenge. Like I haven't been able to beat it yet, and I hate losing. But it's hard because when you die, you have to start at the beginning again, and everything's random. Oh, it's randomly generated. Uh huh. It's so yeah. addicting because you die, and the game's like, try again. Like, like okay, I, sure. I've seen I've seen some stuff on that game. I've seen that and that what is it, the Meat Boy one? Oh, Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy, you die like a million Why, times. Is that, is that similar to it? Well, it's similar in that you die a lot. But it's not the same and type of game. They're both indie games and they both have lots of blood. Yeah. Really, really gory. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's cartoon gore, but it's still gore. 
And I think they, I think they're re- re- made by either the same people or some of the same people because they reference the villain from Super Meat Boy, which is I think Doctor Fetus. And I think they were both, they're both involved with Newgrounds because Newgrounds is definitely in the opening credits for the Binding of Isaac. But yeah, this game is effed up, and it's a lot of fun, but it is super hard. And sometimes it's just mean, like. You could go, you just end up, and it doesn't give you any of the useful items, and you just run around dying all the time, like and the, within two like, minutes you're done. Do you like the cheapness? Do you like the... Is that your style? Uh, Brian, I what, like... Yeah. Brian, what games do you play now? Mortal Kombat? Like, you got the poster behind you. How are you doing with that? Uh, I kind of dropped Mortal Kombat, to be honest. Yeah, I think you told us like two months ago. I was just busting yeah. the balls. Yeah, I, pl- I played it uh, two days ago, though. I'm still decent at it. Uh-huh, of course. You know, um, but I've been playing Street Fighter 4 heavily because I'm uh, actually competing at Summer Jam this year. Have you been oh, able nice. To, have you been able to try 5 yet? The beta. Let's talk about that, man. Remember, no. remember when you were on the show last time, Brian? Do you remember this? And you, We were talking about the beta for Street Fighter 5, and Brian's like, no, I'm not pre-ordering that. I don't, I don't care. I, you know, whatever. And then I made the comments, probably not even going to work, right? Do you remember this, Bri? What happened? I'm listening. Do you remember when this happened or not? <laughs> dude. I was like, dude, I'm the bid is probably not going to work. And you're like, yeah, it's good. I'm not going to pre-order. You, so what happened? You hit it right on the no. We both were correct. Yeah, I that's said, what I'm saying. I, I said, listen, you know what? I'm not pre-ordering that game on PSN for $60. Because how much you want to bet, it's not going to work. And I'm be out 60 bucks for no reason. And so, yeah, it's a beta. It's, you know, then they're like, well, it's a beta. It doesn't, it's not supposed to work. You're like, well, right. why even do it then? What do you, you know, it's... Yeah, dude, it's, it's one it's of those insane. things. I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, and I tried. Could not get in. And after a while, I was just like, you know what, whatever, man. Did you wind up pre-ordering though? How did How did you try? I pre-ordered it from GameStop. Oh, shit. From my, yeah, like GameStop actually, they were late getting the codes at my particular store. Uh huh. So the day I told you about it, you know, I didn't get my code yet, but I got it like two days later. So you never got five. it. So all I really lost is five bucks. I don't understand, man. Why can't they just let you download the training mode or something? You know what I'm saying? You can play offline. You know what I mean? Dude, that's, that's all I wanted. Yeah, and I think people are really happy. Like, you, you can just download the training mode, and there you go. See bro. how the game plays, yeah. yeah. The, the problem is, John, like, you can't even do anything if you're not connected. You can't do training mode, nothing, and you, no one can connect, I guess, right, Bray? Yeah, like, I know a few people who got through, Uh huh. but no luck for me. Dude, guys, they changed a lot. Hadoukens are green now. <laughs> well, we don't know. No one can play, John. And I actually did hear. I heard Ryu is, like, really good this time around. Huh. But, I mean, he's always solid. Well, aside from some of the turbo. I think he's... Everyone's good in that. Yeah. So. Um, this is the first time we got to see into your your world there, Brian, with the webcam. What do you got behind you there? She, like, she got a Marvel poster. Marvel poster in what's the this, middle. What's this mask you have right there? Scorpion on the uh, on the far left. What's this, this mask called? Mask. Over? Yeah. This is actually Assassin's Creed. What's conspiracy <laughs> prop? Okay. This is a piece of Eden. Who who built this? This looks awesome. Yeah. It's really who cool. Who did it? Yeah, it's a piece of Eden. My uh, my actress who does the uh, designs. Wow. Yep. Nice. Yeah, that's that's one of the pieces of Eden, and I that's not Assassin's Creed owned. That's my original idea right there, and that right there is actually you guys. What do you mean? Oh wow, you're right. Yeah, that's our photo. I can't see it. Pull it down. No, John, just look at the just look at the red. Well, we want, you don't even, we I want can, the camera I can to see, see it. it. We want the people at home to be able to see. There we go. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's right in the trash. Oh, yeah. That's how important you guys are to me. Oh, good. <laughs> you got anything else you want to show us, Brian? Uh, over there. Oh yeah, let me take my pants off. Physi- <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This isn't chat roulette, Brian. Say <laughs> <laughs> that for the chat roulette episode. That's gonna be you and I on the chat roulette, okay? Dude, that's gonna be nope. fun, man. Nope. John, I, got I got a lot of stuff going on in here. This is another. Show us some stuff, man. Another you got. Crazy prop. Okay. That's actually the mask that they're going to be wearing the uh, assassins now. You got any weapons or anything you want to show us? Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> one. <laughs> what the fuck? Just pulls out a sword. Yeah. Dude, I, like, I literally got all of my props for it. What was it, like, under your chair or something? You, that, that took no time at all. Like, this whole area is, like, for my uh, my wardrobe and everything. Just in case know? someone burst in the room. Oh, sword's yeah. Sword's ready cut, to go. Yeah, I'll cut there. Oh, ass. John's running away. Wait, he's going <laughs> to get something. He went to go get his sword. Well, everyone has sword. Why don't I have a sword? Everyone's got swords with me. That's because John owns a gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I know. I like Online. people to think I do, though. On guard. Oh, nice. What do you have? What do you call that? Uh, this is a, a really cheesy replica of Charlemagne's sword. Now, d- down in my basement, oh, gosh, again, another little behind-the-scenes kind of thing y'all getting for uh, the series, I have a really, really rusted pirate sword. That's going to reference Edward from the Sanskrit Black Flag. Oh, nice. Did it come rusted or you did, had to rust it? Oh, no, 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 no. It's like legit rusty. Like, that's how old the sword is. That's why it's in the basement. And then well, Brian's, like, like... Brian's like, in my crawl space, I might have a robot's head. <laughs> I might have Hitchbot's head in my... I might have been involved with that. <laughs> <laughs> you better watch out with that tetanus sword, then. I'm trying to see if his arm is in here still. Oh. He's got the, the sword is what removed the, the limbs and everything. You're terrible. <laughs> I love it. Awful. It's something else over here, too. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Skull. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about this, man. You're um, you're coming to your Comic-Con, right? Yes. Sweet. Oh, I gave you your sweatshirt back. As this guy. As Skull. Yep. What an upgraded outfit. Awesome, man. So, um, John, what, what days are you going to New York? I could only get tickets for Sunday. I thought you were going Saturday or something. I could only get tickets for Sunday. Well, that's when I'm going, so why are you so upset? Because so I can only go one day. Um, so yeah, we're all going to be there, man. Um, and we, yeah, we, I'll be there Sunday as well. Of course, Ray Spirit, nice. Spirit's coming from Australia. Yeah, that's going to be great. So I'm hoping the four of us can all do a show together if we're still doing shows by then, because we might be banned. <sighs> the channel might be shut down by that point. Oh, Seriously, yeah. Oh, yeah. I still, I, I'm still no? scared that's going to happen, man. Brian says no. He says you're fine. Yeah, yeah, no, you'll, you'll be shut down by then. <laughs> Dude, I just... <laughs> I, I thought he was. You. I thought you were saying like, "No, you're fine." He's like, "No, no, no, no. no. you'll be shut down." Dude, I, mean, dude I, I warned just, you. I just confessed on your show that I had the robot's arm in my room. Like, we, we confessed on. to so many crimes today. We committed crimes. <laughs> Not only do we commit crimes on the program, we also confess to other ones that have been committed in the past for no reason. <laughs> um, have you gone to, to New York Comic Con before, Brian? Did, I've been to New York before, but this will be my first Comic Con. What uh, What days are you going, by the way? The cell. <laughs> oh yeah, I see that. Awesome. But uh, I'm going Sunday. That's it. Like, uh, well, I was going to go Saturday and Sunday, but that's up in the air. Yeah, we couldn't um, get the tickets, so it's uh, not happening. <laughs> yeah, I was I was going to actually stay down there in the hotel the whole weekend. Uh huh. Um, with a date. Oh wow! I don't I don't know if she's going to go. Like I don't know if it's set in stone as far as she's going or not. So if she doesn't go, then I'm just going Sunday, and I'll. Is she cosplaying? Yeah, she'll be cosplaying as a uh, Chun Li and Katana. At the same, same time. time, two different days. She was going to okay. do Chun Li Saturday and Katana Sunday, I believe, and I was going to do Shazam Saturday and Sunday. I would have wanted to do Skull Midnight. Well, we're Wait, there, like so we'll... Captain Marvel. Yeah, exactly. Nice. We'll do the Skull on Midnight or uh, Skull on uh, Sunday. So, so, like, when we're there, because at least two people know what, what it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, okay, okay. What was it John dress up to? Uh, I could do that. If they yeah. let me bring the plunger. Oh, that'll let you walk around with a plunger. It's crazy. It's like two months from now, but it's going to come so quick. It's going to be like, snap your fingers and we're there. Dude, I so know. It's going to be water. freaky. Time, like, the summer's dead now. It's crazy. It's like, really, what happened? I want it to be autumn. It's too hot. It's going to be winter before you know it. It's going to be next Good. summer. It's going to be next summer by the time you... Bad. Rambo, I expect you to show up with a blue nose, dude. No, I won't do it. Dude. We all let it go. Just wear the blue nose and nothing else. Wear the blue nose. I decided to let it go. It's over. Okay. Let it go. I told Brian last time he was on the show, you can have the property to the the whole license and everything. You can take it over. I thought you were joking. No, it's true, man. It's over, man. Brian is the owner of the property. He can do whatever he wants. Which property? I am not. Any property that I've been associated with, Brian can have. Hey, you can't give away Schnozman and Hole Punch. I'm part of that. Well, it's between you guys now. I'm not a part of that. Um, 
OJ don't believe him. He's in denial. Before, he's in denial. Uh, before we get out of here, Brian, do you have any stories from work that you might want to tell us? Something funny that happened working your uh, your gig? Anything? Um, not really. It's it's been really dead lately. How about just like in the past or any, anything you want to tell us? Any kind of story? <laughs> Did you ever have to beat somebody down really like severely? I haven't yet to get into like a physical altercation. That's good. Aside from the other night, but <laughs> aside from yesterday, it, when it you was, took out Hitchbot, it, yeah, that <laughs> bastard. But anyway, <laughs> it was a it was a situation where the guy just didn't want to cooperate with me. Mm. So, you know, I, I verbally got him to cooperate, but before me, me persuading him to cooperate, he was like, you know doing his million man slap like he's Honda on me. I'm like, what the hell are you doing, dude? Yeah. <laughs> it just he's like, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, nice mood swing. <laughs> was just, unru- just an unruly customer or was he actually trying to get away with something? Dude, he's out of control. No, he was stealing. stealing. He stole thirty five dollars worth of women's panties. Oh boy. <laughs> And, Women's panties. And the other twenty dollars was worth was trash bags. Huh. So, hmm. I, I don't know what you theory. can do with the combination. Yes. Well, he was about to go steal some mannequins and have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> what does the trash bag do? You could get in there with it? Like put the mannequins inside. Oh, uh, to get them out. Throw them in. Just yeah. that's all right, that's more to get them. I was thinking that's part of the act. <laughs> Somehow. Well wow. you could make a cape out of it. Like you tie it around your head like some kind of officiation type of thing. <laughs> While you're having sex with the mannequin, what do the what do the, what do the panties have to do with it? Oh, well, you put the panties on the mannequin. What? What's, what's sexy about that, Bray? I I, will, I don't know. I didn't steal them. <laughs> we don't want these mannequins to be indecent. Take the panties if off. If I'm gonna steal a mannequin, yeah. it better have clothes on. I'm not gonna have. He, naked he's, he's creating an entire scene as far as being with a woman. This is what we got to find out, man. <laughs> this is what a web series should be about. This guy and what he's doing with this. This is interesting. Stuff. But yeah, man, but it's been dead for me. And unfortunately, the store I work at is being shut down. Wow. Oh, it's awful. Half marks all over are being shut down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in serious debt. They're uh-huh. going horrible. I um, I got a call about a job because I was looking for, at one point I was looking for like a part-time thing. Yeah. So it was like a couple of hours a day working for the A&Ps. You guys have A&P in, uh, in your area? It's like a grocery store. Yeah, that's who I work for. Oh shit! Oh, oh damn. Okay, so I was talking to the the lady calling me, and she's like, "Yeah, you gotta, you gotta go in for like you basically go in with your own car, and you like stock some stuff for two hours, or whatever. You go to different A and P's." So I was like, "All right, sounds kind of cool." The mm-hmm. next day, she calls me back, and she's like, "Yeah, they just announced today that all the A and P's are going out of business, so the job's no longer available." <laughs> yep. It's like, well, all right. Well, I guess uh, this didn't work out. Yeah, it's bizarre, man. So it's the same company, huh? Yep, same company. Huh. Yeah, Pathmark is under A&P. Okay. So we're connected in that way, Brian. So there you go. Yeah. What is... Several others. (laughs) Wait, what? That we can't talk about on the air, right? (laughs) What the hell did say? What's the release date for the Assassin's Creed series? Episode 1 comes out January 2016. All right. Nice. So uh, how many episodes are you doing on this? Five episodes. So you're, are you planning to like finish them all first, and then you put them out? Exactly. Okay, that's a good. Like way to yeah, I'm gonna just dump them all out at once, sort of like uh, Netflix? Assassin's Fist, the Street Street Fighter one. Is that right? You're gonna put them all at the same time, or are you just joking? Yeah, literally okay. jump through all like them Netflix up at... does. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like it. I like that. Do you yeah, have any um, do you have any plans for the series beyond uh, putting it out? Are you thinking about like I don't know? We, we, we got any plans for this festivals no. or? Uh, so, like, stuff it, like that. It, I'll do, I'll, you know, I'll throw it in Sundance, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Expensive. But I never really planned for this to go past, you know, any like season two or season three. It's just one season of a web series based on Assassin's Creed. That was it. That's pretty much what I'm going to use to get my name out there as far as being a director and a film writer. Good, man. You had to get the experience going. I want to talk to you about yeah. doing some stuff too, man. Right. Good, good times here. John, what's going on with you, man, before we get out of here? Um, I did things? just remember. Uh-huh. I did see a movie that, uh, yeah, so Brian, um, I, you reminded me when you picked up Cell. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I saw Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F the other day. I heard it was amazing. It, it's actually pretty funny. It's it's pretty good. The, there's some stupid Dragon Ball Z stuff in it. And there's <laughs> stupid Dragon Ball Z stuff making fun of stupid Dragon Ball Z stuff. Wow. Like, it pokes fun at itself a couple times. It was really awesome for, in that regard. But yeah, it's worth a watch. If you're at all interested in Dragon Ball Steve, I mean... If you can find it, um, it was only in like theaters for like a week up here. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think the last day for the for the premiere here was like yesterday. I think. Yeah, but when it when it comes out, watch it. It's uh, I, I liked it better than the last one, which actually wasn't bad either. Huh? What are you, what are you even oh. talking about uh, the one with Beerus? Yeah, the one where they basically have a barbecue and eat food the whole movie. Yeah. Oh um, my! <laughs> it's just the original people making making the movie. Uh, Kira Toriyama was, uh, yeah, I think he wrote it and directed it, or at least wrote it, or had some still, uh, yeah. put stuff out. Yeah, it's, it's well worth watching. And they act like What's the GT never happened. I'm gonna, I actually want to bring something up since uh-huh. we talked about DBZ. Yeah, yeah. GT never happened. After all these years, I sell, you see that sell thing, sells like my favorite character of all time. I stopped watching after his season. I never seen the Boo Saga, I never seen Broly or anything, any of that. So, four days ago, I decided to actually sit down and watch the entire Majin Buu Super uh, Saiyan Man saga. I've seen it. Very nice. And, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't just, like it or what? Dude, I thought it was bad, man. Like, it, <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was hilarious. Yeah. But it was bad. Like, it really was bad. You get to the point where you almost feel bad for the bad guys because they, they try so hard and they actually, like, beat them. Right, and they're like, "Oh, Dan, they they earned it. They've tried." And then it's like some nonsense, and like we reversed everything you did, and you almost have pity on them. Like, "Oh man, you guys didn't even do that. You lo- you did a terrible job. You stumbled upon the answer in the end. While well, these freaking guys were killing themselves trying to put this together, and they did it. They deserve it." The one redeeming factor was Hercule. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, he was gold. He was comedy. He's supposed gold. to be Hogan, yeah. Yeah, he's like buddy buddy with Boo. That was great. <laughs> he's racist um, as well. By the way, yeah. Dragon Ball GT officially never happened. Now, yeah, 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 not, yeah. Not the new series happens instead. Mm-hmm. What's that? Uh, like Super. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z Super. What the hell where is they that? have a new form. They have a new form with the best name ever. And unless I've got it wrong, I honest to goodness think it's. Super, uh, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Is this well, a, what is this? Explain what it is. It's a new series. It's a new series. Yeah, the first We're, episode aired in Japan a little while ago. Is it over here yet? No, no. You can, you uh, it's coming. Watch, or you just, can watch the uh, the 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 dub. They don't have the English version. Yeah. So I what's think, going on, John? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. It takes place after the movie, and I only just saw the movie. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. it takes place after Resurrection F. Yeah, which honestly is a, kind of a stupid concept. Like, hey guys, remember that villain we killed? That was really cool. Yeah. Oh, remember how we came back and we killed him again? Yeah. Well, let's bring him back again. This will be good this time. Let and me guess. They brought him. They brought Freezer back because of the Dragon Balls. Do you want me to give you a little, like a little tiny piece of why that scene was so dumb? Dude, you can spoil you the whole movie. I don't care. <laughs> okay. They You'd probably figure Frieza. it out if you wanted to. You know. They. They. they, they so Frieza's like henchman Sorbet, or no, or Sherbert. I forgot which Sherbert maybe. <laughs> Lee takes one guy with him to Earth, and they find three people who used to be in the Red Ribbon Army and got turned into children, like Pilaf, some dog with a katana, and some woman with a gun, who is like a child now and his trunks is his girlfriend or something. Oh, I know. Um, you're talking about. Yeah, and they they find the Dragon Balls and they go to make a wish and like. We wish for Frieza to be brought back to life. And the dragon's like, hold up. You're aware that if I bring him back to life, he's going to be back in the same state he was when he died, right? Yeah, cut in half, right? In pieces. What do you, what do you mean? Yeah, cut into pieces and exploded. Uh-huh. And they stop and think about this for a while. And they're like, okay, sure. We got a regeneration chamber. This is fine. And they bring him back to life. And you just see this, this quivering pile, these quivering piles of flesh appear on the ground. Like it's this twitching purple and white mass of organs and skin just twitching on the ground. And they start picking it up by hand and putting it in a bucket. 
And then once they're all done, they're like, all right, we're going to leave now. Um, and one of the, one of the, like the dog goes, oh, you forgot this and holds up Frieza's eye. And they're all like, oh, oops. Yeah. They give him the eye and they take Frieza in pieces and put him in a regeneration chamber. But he just reappears as a pile of mush, which makes me wonder. There's no point to wishing someone back to life if they're going to be in the exact same state they were in when they died. Exactly. It sounds as messed up as the Fantastic Four spoilers we had earlier. I'm kind of mad that I asked you what happened. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm mad at you too, Brian. But they I'm actually, it's funny, they have explanations for why Frieza should be scary again and for some other stuff. It was actually a pretty good movie, so. So he's a, he's a, a god version of himself, right? Who, the Frieza? Gold? Yeah, he's like, why is he gold? Is he Super Saiyan Frieza? Frieza has a new form. So he's Super Saiyan Frieza. <laughs> you could go that. You could say that, I guess. DBZ, I mean, br- br- DBZ is always kind of like wrestling to me in a lot of ways. Like they put like wrestling if it's supposed to be done properly because they always right. they always have the powerful guy, but then he puts somebody else over you know, on the way out. You know, like he, like Frieza put over Trunks big time. He yeah, did to, the job, brother. He did the job to Trunks because Frieza was the <laughs> top guy. Frieza was the top guy. Then like Trunks come takes him out, squashes him. You're like, oh shit, Trunks must be like really powerful. <laughs> Like they they always did that throughout the whole series. Like they always, yeah. um, one yeah, guy put yeah. over the other guy. These three characters that wish Frieza back were they like in his original group? I don't or think they, so. I don't, I don't remember I don't seeing Sherbert or Sorbet ever. It wasn't in the the five thousand episodes of Namek where they flew around and did nothing. They weren't in there. So here is my question: If you can bring back a past villain, why in the hell would you bring back <laughs> and not true. sell? Because apparently right. everyone thinks Frieza's the coolest. They should have brought that perfect cell. <laughs> Why what? So everyone that? can die? That's the point. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Oh, that is a good point. Like, perfect cell is a bit scarier, huh? Yeah, he's way scarier than Frieza was. Didn't they only beat him because they, like, basically torched every last cell in his body at yeah, once? And exactly. And cell only lost because he had Vegeta's essence inside of him and he got cocky. I think you guys got to start a DBC podcast on the side. I think John's getting uh, salty about his talk about Dragon Ball Z. No, I'm just making a suggestion. Listen, I want to see you two do a Dragon Ball Z podcast. Do a, do thirty minutes every other week. I love to. I love to check this out. Okay, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the talk. Boo Saga, man. No, I saw. I oh, dude, saw that. I got halfway through. I like. I got up to the point where they got where where he eats Vegeta or Gogeta or whatever the frell his name is, and then he splits from one person into two again. I used to watch it, man. It was like Cartoon Network. Uh, came on at like midnight every weekday. Tsunami. It was and it was shot for an hour, so I would I would watch this every uh, midnight, and then Howard Stern would come on uh, E the E Channel at one, <laughs> and then I had to I had to go to school. I had to get up at like five thirty the next morning. I was always like destroyed. Wow. <laughs> I did this for years, and that's why I am where I am now. <laughs> so there you sounds go. All right. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's gonna wrap us up, guys. Uh, it was a great time. Thanks for joining us, Bri. Yeah, seriously, it's nice to Anytime. get to speak to you again. Yeah, definitely. Bri, put over all the stuff, man. Twitter and all that. Uh, good things. Put over everything. Go ahead. Put over everything. Everybody, you can catch me on Twitter. You can uh, find me at my name, Brian Deneau. You'll see me. I'm like the only person in the world with that name, probably. <laughs> really? And you can check out my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash C slash Tiger Powered. Media TPM. You can find a Sets Creed West Conspiracy, anything behind the scenes, teaser trailers. You can find some Ultra Street Fighter 4 matches that I'm going to be doing. You'll see really high level gameplay of that. And uh, that's pretty much it. No longer doing my podcast because John got me here. So. Oh, <laughs> I ruined it. You poached him, bro. I told no, you no. late happy birthday to Mark. I signed him to a big contract, exclusive contract over here. Yeah. And I told him to kill Hitchbot, and he did it. That was his test. I was like, Brian, you can only be on the show if you bring me Hitchbot's head as a test. You. That was my hazing. I was just hazing the test. If you, you, now you're one of us, yes. Yep, so I'm, li- I'm living the life. You know, I got, <laughs> I, I got his arm right here. Whenever Brian's living write, the life of free podcasts. Whenever I write my paper for school, I just use his hand. I don't got no reason to use mine. Use like the oil. Oh, I thought you were going to say use it to wipe yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that too. He That's uses true. the robot fluids that are leaking from his body to write yeah, with. Man. And he's the he's the moderator of my Pay Me Tons account. Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Nice. <laughs> so what's going on with us, man? We got Connecticut Comic Con this weekend. We might be going. I don't know what the hell's going on. We'll let you know. Um, next week, I think we, there should be a show. Planning on. I'm not sure. I'm looking to take a vacation uh, at some point coming up. I don't know when, though. I'm not really uh, I'm trying to figure it out. Let me know. It'll be kind of like one of those things where I just go. I just disappear. <laughs> so I, like to, I don't like to do it. Um, so I'll let you know, man. Stay tuned for everything. Thanks, thanks for both of you guys for doing this tonight, man. What's so quick? It's a good time. Yeah, seriously. Thanks yeah, to everyone that watched the program. Thanks for everyone that's uh, sticking by, sticking by us. Yeah. And uh, thanks to everyone that gets the joke. It's not always. <laughs> oh, and late happy birthday to Mark Crown. Yes, Mark Crown's birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Mr. Crown. And I happy sent him a tweet. I said, thank God that your parents had sexual intercourse all those years ago to create you. I want to and then he finds out he's a, he was in vitro fertilization and he's... Whoa, 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 whoa. No, not Mark. He was made the old-fashioned way. Trust me, I know. Okay? Yes, Brad, you saying something? I said, yeah, he was made and that robot was watching. Oh. <laughs> Maybe that's what Hitchbot was trying to do. Just pregnant. He committed suicide. Yeah, yeah. So that is oh, going to do it, my friends. Brian, say goodbye to the beautiful people. Goodbye, mortals. OJ, say goodbye to the beautiful people. Hello, immortals. This has been a production of StayBallsy.com, the best in free and optional entertainment. Have a pleasant evening, and remember, stay ballsy. Don't take any shit from anyone. <laughs>